This week on Cracked Science, Joe Rogan and guest mangle climate change science and Turkey does away with the theory of evolution. Hey, this is Jonathan and you're watching Cracked Science, the brand new bi-weekly show from the McGill Office for Science and Society. Let's start with Joe Rogan. For those of you who don't know, Rogan is a stand-up comedian, mixed martial arts aficionado, and most importantly for our purpose here, the host of a podcast called The Joe Rogan Experience, a long-form conversational show that has proved to be one of the most popular on the internet. On episode 1001, which streamed on August 21st, he spoke to Mike Baker, a former CIA covert ops officer. The topic of climate change was mentioned, as well as Bill Nye's advocacy of the topic on, among other platforms, his Netflix show Bill Nye Saves the World, and I wanted to comment on their discussion. We open up on that tired old trope. Bill Nye, who's not really a scientist. No. What is he? Is he a... He's an... He's an engineer. Engineer, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Which, yeah, yeah. you know, is yeah, still gotta discipline be smart. based. You have to be smart. But, yeah. you know, he calls himself Bill Nye, the science guy. He's, by the, by the way, he has an undergrad de degree. He's not even a, doesn't even have a PhD. <laughs> hey, or I got an one MD. of those. Yeah. Okay, first off, an engineer is not to a scientist what a baker is to a surgeon. Engineering is an applied science. It is a bridge built between basic sciences and actual technology. And you know who built that bridge? That's right engineers. Moreover, on Bill Nye Saves the World, the head writer was Phil Plate, who has a PhD in astronomy. Second of all, do you know why it doesn't matter that Bill Nye is an engineer in the case for climate change? Because his stance is in line with the scientific consensus. If you're a plumber and you agree that climate change is happening, that human activity has contributed significantly to the overall rise in temperature, and that we need to do something about this, the fact that you work on plumbing has no bearing on the validity of climate change. At least 97% of actively publishing climate scientists agree on the issue of man-made or anthropogenic climate change, a position endorsed by 18 American scientific societies, international academies, US government agencies, and intergovernmental bodies. But this takes us to the next part of Rogan and Baker's discussion. Science is fantastic. It's, it's yeah. critical for our civilization. I'm not a science criticizer. But there's a weird thing about people that are a part of science where their own egos and their own need for p positive affirmation sort of supersede any critical thinking. So there's certain subjects that cannot be discussed. There's certain things that like they're, they're almost like yeah. it's almost like science religion. You know, so there's certain subjects that are, aren't even open to scrutiny. Well, I think that's right. And I think part of it is, is, is also we have gotten to a point where you can't. And I don't know how you, you walk it back, but you, you, you can't have conflicting ideas in the same statement or the same sentence. And, and idea, things conflict all the time, right? And, the, and you can have uh, truths that, that collide with each other and don't, and don't necessarily make sense. So, but it seems as if now everything has to be in absolutes, right. and whether it's climate change. So you can't say, you, you know, if you, if you just have this middle-of-the-road you know, discussion where you say, well, look, of course— you know, humans, I'm sure, have some impact. I don't know For what sure. that is. And then, and you know, this is a problem, and we do have to do our part, and we do have to work to, to try to be the best we can be, but that's not good enough. You've got you, you've to be, a, a, you know, sort of totalitarian about the mm -hmm. whole issue. I agree that scientists often fall short of the principles of science. I think it's important to criticize bad science when we see it and to punish scientific fraud, but... The point Baker is making here is an argument to moderation, and it's simply false. Everything in science does not have to be an absolute. Quite the opposite. Science is all about pushing back the limits of uncertainty, with new knowledge revealing even more uncertainties. In some cases, however, this knowledge builds up to such a consensus, and from multiple lines of inquiry, the conclusion becomes practically certain. To illustrate Baker's fallacious argument, we could say some people think the Earth is flat, while others think it's an oblate spheroid. Therefore, the truth must be somewhere in between. Anything else is totalitarian. People have a hard time processing this dissenting opinion idea, mm. and that starts to shut down debate, and it starts to shut down the, the idea that you can have a discussion about science where you have 
you know, these conflicting ideas and how do you, how do you resolve them? That used to be the whole concept about science is to t test theories and come right. up with what works. And anyway, rah, rah, what do but I no, know? I think it's science is about testing theories to try and invalidate them. I just think you don't like the conclusions scientists have reached on climate change. In other news, as of the beginning of this month, Turkey has a new high school curriculum and one thing that is missing from it is the theory of evolution. Turkey's education minister, Ismet Yilmaz, is reported by the BBC as saying that concepts like mutations and inheritance are still in the curriculum, but he also said evolutionary biology is best left to be taught at the university level. It's a theory that requires a higher philosophical understanding than school children have. Critics of this change have pointed out that a chapter on the origin of human beings has been excluded. The decision was made by the Turkish government with input from religious academics, including a private university president who had this to say, most Turks don't believe in evolution because it implies that God doesn't exist and we're all here on earth just by chance. That's confusing. Turkey is a modern democracy, but we should not be afraid to embrace our Islamic culture as well. So what is this theory that seemingly confuses these people? The theory of evolution, like any scientific theory, is far from a hunch, but is actually an explanation of the cause of a particular phenomenon that is arrived at through multiple types of evidence, and that makes predictions that are shown to be true. So the theory of evolution is not just a theory. The theory of evolution is that life on this planet is not static. It undergoes changes at the level of its DNA sequence. These changes or mutations can result over the course of generations in one species becoming another so that a primitive life form can slowly evolve over time and have different species branching off of it. Mutations arise spontaneously. The enzyme that replicates DNA is known to make mistakes, while radiation and certain chemicals can also induce mistakes. And some of these mistakes remain uncorrected. These mistakes or mutations can be neutral to the species, they can be beneficial to it, or they can be harmful to its survival. So how is this whole process of gradual changes over time guided? Well, there is no conscious decision at play. Quite elegantly, it's a natural selection for traits that improve a species' ability to reproduce. You see, when a life form reproduces, it passes on part of its DNA to its offspring. If a spontaneous mutation provides an animal with camouflage, it will be better at evading predators and will thus have more time to reproduce, thus passing along the camouflage-enabling gene it randomly got to its litter. Over time, such a species becomes better adapted to its environment. There have been numerous court cases in the United States to teach creationism, also known as intelligent design, along with evolution in science classrooms, even though creationism is not a science. Now we see Turkey not even teaching the controversy, as if there was a scientific controversy on this issue, but not teaching evolution at all, except for some of its building blocks, like mutations and inheritance, but without putting them in their proper context. Their argument that such a theory is too confusing to high schoolers does not pass the sniff test. An outreach group at McGill was teaching natural selection to children not too long ago, and, and here's how they did it. They gave Legos to the kids and asked them to build cars out of them. Once the cars had been made, the children were shown a particular obstacle course their cars had to go through. Some of the cars were just naturally better adapted to the course, but the car's creator had no way to know this in advance. That's natural selection. Some data that is over 10 years old shows that fewer than 25% of Turks accept evolution as an explanation of how modern life came to be. In Canada, 61% of us accept evolution, but that may include Canadians who believe it is guided by a supernatural agent. In the States, there's 62% acceptance, but the number drops to 33% when we take supernatural guidance out of the equation. It is sad to see an entire country like Turkey deprive its future workforce and intelligentsia of profound scientific concepts. I'd love to know your thoughts on this story in the comments below. And I want to finish with a recurring segment that has yet to get a name in which I end the show on a bright note by mentioning two things I recommend. My first recommendation of this week is a podcast called You Are Not So Smart. It explores the various ways in which our brain lies to us as we attempt to understand the world around us. And I specifically want to plug episode 106, The Climate Paradox, which features an interview with Per Espen about the psychology of climate change. He goes over the reasons why many people can be bothered with climate change and ways around that. 
My second recommendation has to do with evolution. If you want to know more about it, including the evidence we have for it, please get Why Evolution is True by Jerry A. Coyne. He is a University of Chicago professor at the Department of Ecology and Evolution, and his fairly slim book on the topic is both elegant and extremely convincing. That's it for this week. I'll be back two weeks from now with a whole new show. In the meantime, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and check out our website at mcgill.ca/oss.